Okay, we are going to open up our Monster Energy NASCAR All-Star Race. Media availabilities with the winner of the 2017 edition of the All-Star Race. Driving a new paint scheme this weekend. The driver of the number 18 M&M's Hazelnut Toyota with several available right now for those who like it. And that's Kyle Bush. Kyle, um, maybe just start off. How was uh, how are the practices today? And uh, maybe talk about your, your new scheme with M&M's. Uh, yeah, we're definitely excited to have the opportunity to uh, showcase a new product in the M&M's family with Hazelnut Spread. And looking forward to having um, a good weekend here this weekend in the All-Star Race and, and being able to go back to Victory Lane, win ourselves a million bucks. So, um, you know, we started out real rough. Um, didn't quite unload off the truck as good as we wanted to, but we've made a lot of ground and um, have made our car a lot better. So um, not really sure exactly how it stacks up yet with our competition, but um, we'll certainly find out tomorrow night. Great. Thank you. Kyle, if you have a question for Kyle, please raise your hand. We'll your mic. Fair warning. If it's a dumb question, it's overhand. And if it's a good question, I'll throw them to you underhand. <laughs> okay. Get that fastball ready for Lewis. You, you can't be you can't, a lawyer. How differently does this car drive, these package, than the 2019 cars? Um, you're talking about just with the front ducts and the hood duct versus just the front ducts? Um, not much different. It really, you can't tell anything with the with the hood ducks um, that I've noticed. I haven't noticed anything about them except engine temperatures being hotter. Um, you know, we we all are trying to figure out how much grill tape to run and what to do with the with the front end settings to um, you know mitigate the hot air that comes through the radiator that then comes out of the hood that then goes right into the the air intake you know, on top of the hood there. And then you got hot cars in front of you as well, too, when you're back in traffic. So it just keeps heat soaking and getting hotter. Uh, so we're all kind of looking at that right now. Um, but as far as the, the, the drivability, I'd say the only other thing that I've noticed is when you get in the corner and you land and compress and you feel the, the splitter touch, you don't feel it um, stall the splitter as bad and drive you up the racetrack. You know, you can actually get into the corner, land, and compress, and the car will still stay turning. So um, I feel like that's a positive. So we've got that ridged splitter uh, like we all used to run, and then somebody somewhere thought it was a great idea to have flat splitters, and that made racing worse. So um, we're back to the, the ridged for a week anyways, and um, so far so good. I'll have to wait and see what it does in traffic. That'd be an underhand. Go to Steve here on the left. Kyle Steve Reefen, Associated Press. Um, what are your thoughts on his second straight year NASCAR has kind of used this race as a research and development tool? I mean, do you like it as a driver or do you not like it? Is it challenging? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. I think there's there's opportunities during the season that we've got a couple racetracks that are certainly uh, a bit more challenging or difficult to put on um, good racing or, you know, passing, things like that. And so um, Charlotte's kind of been that way for the last few years. I don't know why. Um, you know, it, Years ago with the Koi cars, I remember guys being able to run the wall, run the top, run the bottom, wherever, and, and it put on a pretty good show. But lately, uh, since we've gone to the COT and then um, um, Gen 6, now it's it's kind of mitigated itself just to the bottom being the best way around here. So the the PJ1, the, the traction compound, obviously that's kind of – it's definitely better to be in it, and so it's it's making the, the middle groove faster than the bottom groove. Uh, I don't know if guys will really be able to go to the bottom and, and out – handle and outpass a guy that's running the middle um and if you're in the middle i think you can protect enough to the outside that you won't be able to let anybody get to your outside so we'll see what what happens in the race but um you know certainly it's it's quite interesting right now with with just practice and and not really in race yet jacob jacob Simon speed sport kyle uh, you've got 16 wins here across all three series so what is it about this place that has suited you through the years, and has that changed at all with what NASCAR has done with the PJ1 the last couple of years? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's I don't know exactly what suited me. It took me forever to win a cup race here. I only have one cup win here. Let's all remember that, one. Um, but past that, you know, truck Xfinity, it's been really, really good for me. We've been, we've been fast here, and, um, you know, it would certainly be nice to uh, continue to – keep up those winning ways in the cup cars and, and win, win an all, another all-star race here, win another 600 here. Uh, technically, we only come here once a year, even though there's three weekends here. We only come here once a year for points-paying wins. So, um, you know, that's kind of a, a challenge or, or different. Uh, but, you know, I don't know what, what's, what's 
allowed me to run well here, win races here, but the, um, you know, the traction compound the last couple of years has certainly moved and changed and been different. Last year, I remember in practice, we first got into it and I think myself and Brad Keselowski both, we both crashed instantly as soon as we got in it. And today was a little bit better than that. So, um, you know, we'll see what, what all transpires here later. Mark. Mark Garrow, PRN. Kyle, looking ahead to the uh, 600 next week, with, with the change of the package, a number of drivers have talked about a little bit tougher physically for you guys. So how do you anticipate uh, the physical uh, toll that you may take during the race next week will it be greater than you've had in the 600 before? Um, yeah, I think so. I think it will because the the stresses that we've been putting on ourselves through the corners all this year have been harder. They've, you know, cars have been faster through the mid corners. So you're just creating more centrifugal forces and uh, that, that goes through your body. So, um, you know, that's certainly been higher. Um, you know, the cars relatively, you can hustle it more. So you're up on top of the wheel. I feel like it a little bit more, just trying to get more out of it. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely, um, you know, when you're out front leading, you know, and, and the car's gripped up and good, you can you can kind of take a breath, you can kind of take it easy. But whenever you're trying to run people down or pass people, uh, it gets a bit hairier um, and, and crazier. But it's just uh, it's going to be for a long race and for a long night um, with with 600 miles over typically running 500. We'll go to Dustin in the middle here. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Kyle, I'm curious, um, looking back to the last lap of last weekend's race at Kansas with, with Eric and, and Clint. and, and Never not, saw it. I'm sorry? I've never seen it. Okay. Does that trump your question? Well, obviously it was a, it was a big block, and I'm just wondering, people have talked about blocking even becoming more and more of an issue when there's a significant block, and even though it's the last lap, does that kind of show every other competitor what maybe is acceptable or is it still you look at it and go if i'm going to do that i'm putting my finish in my own hands because the guy behind me may punt me or may let up i, I just didn't know how when there's a big block and people seem to be saying that there might be more of these does that does that start to impact how the field reacts and what everybody else might see yeah it does um you know i think there's Guys have had runs. Uh, I, I threw a couple blocks last weekend. Guys had runs on me. I would turn up on the on the straightaway to make sure they couldn't get to my outside. And if they wanted to get to my inside, I let them get to my inside because I figured I could run through the corner and get my momentum down the straightaway and be able to to clear them on the next straightaway. You know, so um, it's just it's all relative. You kind of got to play it out and and be careful with it. I I did a uh, I was almost clear a Boyer. wasn't sure if I was clear a Boyer, and I pulled up in front of him in practice here, and he he kind of was like right on my bumper, so it was really close. I call I cut it close, um, but it was practice, and, and he let me live. You know, if it was a race, the last lap in the race, uh, I probably would have been turned. You know, so um, you just you just got to be ready for it. You know, if you're gonna throw a block, um, <laughs> like I did with Tony Stewart back at Daytona a couple years ago, it it can turn ugly. So you just got to be ready for it. All depends on I guess on who's behind you and. How pissed off they are in the moment. Yeah, I mean, I was I was trying to, I was trying to pass Clint, and I had a huge run on him down the front stretch, off a of four down the front stretch, and I got past him, and I tried to make sure that I cleared him so he didn't get back to my outside when I got back to one and two to be able to get back by me. Like I wanted to see if that if that move that I made was going to clear him for the lead, and then um, you know see if I could maintain uh, the lead off a of turn two. Hey, hey Kyle, Phil over from WSOC in Charlotte. Um, when you have a small town like Mooresville that, that's racing crazy like it is and, and it has the tragedy that it had two weeks ago, what do you kind of see your role as a NASCAR driver to kind of help some of that healing? I mean, obviously, the, there's a lot of tragedy in our world. Um, you know, each and every day we, we, we're, we're so thankful and, and honestly we take it for granted sometimes that the, the freedoms that we have and we thank for next weekend, especially the military with Memorial Day weekend for all the things that they sacrifice and do for us. But we also have the, the firefighters, the, the medics, the ambulance, the, the, the policemen, everybody that is out there to help you know make our world a safer place. And obviously with 
like the Las Vegas thing that happened and with the um, you know the UNC thing that the UNCC thing that happened obviously there's a, there's a lot of risk out there and uh, it's very unfortunate so you know we obviously pray for those that have been affected and have had the losses and um, you know we try as a, as a community to uh, to help build them up and um, you know show them a good time bring them a good time allow them to have a night of of not forgetting but just relaxing and, and maybe taking their mind off the situation for a few hours Kyle Hill over to WIXC radio Obviously, we've got two distinct configurations here on this track now, the traditional track and the roval, which you've got to drive once. Of the two situations, what's your preference? Where would you rather be? Which, on which configuration do you like to drive best? The oval. The roval's stupid. Mark? <laughs> Not my problem. Mark. Everybody's got an opinion, just like they got something else. <laughs> Mark Carroll, PR, and Kyle, just playing off a little bit of what you were talking about a moment ago, what in, in our sport, we, we haven't had the controversy uh, that, say, the NFL has had around the flag and around, you know, how we, we honor um, this. Do you have a sense of pride the way NASCAR sort of handles all this, the honoring the military and, and the national anthem and the whole deal from week to week and especially on Memorial Day? Absolutely. You know, we all uh, are patriotic in our own in our own ways, but uh, NASCAR seems to do it probably the best with uh, the NASCAR Salutes program that we've had over the course of the last few years with having the ability to have, um, you know, the fallen soldiers on our race cars for Memorial Day weekend. And um, last year I was fortunate enough to take uh, my my soldier's family to Victory Lane, the Toft family, um, um, Special Sergeant Toft. And then um, this year I get the opportunity to uh, to carry around Sergeant Griffin. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I met uh, the the mom and dad, um, you know, last week being able to do a little um, reveal of my M and M's red, white, and blue paint scheme, and also having the Griffin name on top of the windshield. So um, I'm I'm honored to be able to have them as part of our night, and uh, it makes it up most special when you're able to take them to Victory Lane. So hopefully we can we can do that. But um, you know, with with what we all do at Memorial Day weekend, we I feel like we do it the best. Any final questions for Kyle? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bob Hawkers, Fox Sports. So, uh, there's been a lot of changes, and you're talking about like look at next year's schedule, some changes from tradition. Curious what you how you feel. Does sports still need a 600 mile race like you have next week? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, is it is it a tough race uh, for the drivers? It, it is a tough race for the drivers. Is it as tough as it once was? Maybe not. Um, is it on the cars? No, the cars are way too sophisticated now. Um, we could, you know, I bet you we could probably go 800, maybe even a thousand miles on a race car before you'd start to see problems. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of, of length and attention span, I guess on, on some other drivers would probably argue the fact with me that we don't need a 600 mile race, but I think it's tradition. I think it's history. I think you keep some of those that have been the, the longer ones that have meant more to our sport over the years, like the Daytona 500, um, you know, the Brickyard 400, you've got the Coke 600, um, you've got the Southern 500, like those probably could stay the lengths that they are. And, and many of the others could probably change, um, you know, but that's just, again, my opinion. And you know what I think of opinions. Take the final two, Dustin, wrap up, oh, take three more, Dustin, Lewis, and Brennan. Good, good, Lewis, good. Lewis. Go All right. Um, forgive me if you, you were asked this last week at Kansas, but um, when you had the penalty for going through four pit boxes, uh, Adam Stevens kind of contradicted you. you know, do you enjoy having, you know, having a, a crew chief who will speak up to you? I knew I went through four. I just wanted to be a dipshit on to get on uh, to get on radioactive. I hope I won this week. <laughs> I knew I went through four. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, Kyle, uh, do you a year from now do you hope to be in the middle of double duty, or do you feel like uh, the window is is closing more? on that as as each year passes to do to go do Indianapolis at some point the 500 uh, yeah the window is probably closing um, you know but 
honestly, I guess if I continue to, to work out and try to get in shape or stay in shape or get in better shape, then I can continue to, to keep that door open, uh, for longer. So, um, I've been doing all those things and whether or not the opportunity is, is ever presented, we'll see what happens. But, um, as of right now, I don't, I don't have any plans. We'll wrap it up with Brenton. Okay. I'm not going to put a percent on it. Brendan Marks from the Charlotte Observer, Kyle, did easy softball. I was just wondering, other than winning, what's your favorite all-star memory? Maybe one from growing up, if you have one. Um, yeah, I think um, oh, there's been a lot of them. Um, I think T-Rex is probably the, the coolest one for me. I was a huge Jurassic Park fan, still am to today. Brexton is as well, too. We've watched all the Jurassic Park movies and Jurassic World movies, so... Um, we love that, um, and, and to see how dominant that car was, how fast that car was, and being it with Jeff Gordon, who was my favorite driver growing up as a kid, was, was pretty cool to watch. So I love that one. Um, uh, probably one of the biggest heartbreak ones that I remember watching was Gordon in the Chrome Illusion car. It ran out of gas going into turn one on the last lap. Mark Martin ended up winning. Um, yeah, I love watching. I, another heartbreak moment would have been the year that Earnhardt was in the um, the the silver car, right? And they him and DW and Jeff Gordon crashed out of four or something like that. Um, you know, obviously the Davey and, and Kyle Petty uh, sparks flying. That was the first under the lights. So there, there was a lot of cool memories that I remember from the all-star race and um, being pretty cool watching all of those. Always dreamed of being able to win an all-star race. Finally was able to get it done myself. And then even so with watching Jeff Gordon be able to win his first race, uh, here in the Coca-Cola 600, uh, I've always wanted to, I dreamt of being able to win, you know, a Coke 600 and win and, uh, was finally able to accomplish that last year. So, um, you know, it's, this is a cool place. Um, you know, it comes to Memorial day weekend. It comes, this was kind of about the brink of the season where you really started to see more night racing. We always kind of had Richmond as a night race. And then you'd always look forward to Charlotte being a night race, especially at a mile and a half, you know, and then later nineties, you got Daytona. That was also a night race. So, um, I just like Saturday night racing. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. And, um, you know, you're able to have a, a Sunday off with family and friends. And, of course, now that I have a son, it's his birthday. So it makes it nice. All right. Thank you so much, Kyle. Good All luck right. tomorrow night. Thanks. Appreciate it. Help yourself. Carb loading. I'm going to enjoy these shortly. Thank you. All right. Okay, we'll continue on with the driver of the number 48 Ally Chevrolet and the winningest driver in the Monster Energy NASCAR All Star Race, four time winner of this event, and that's Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy, maybe just talk about your success and, and what makes you so successful in this non points event. Um, man, I've been circumstances in some situations. Um, can remember back to some inverts that worked uh, worked out well for us. Uh, fast race cars certainly have been a big part of that. Um, but there's just so much excitement that comes with this race, and uh, when you're able to win, the celebration that follows uh, definitely leaves a mark, and it's a lot of fun. But um, it's been a few years. Uh, we'd love to get back to victory lane, and obviously the the payday is unlike anything we see in the sport uh, in today's world. And um, post you know, RTA and the, the way that the purse is structured now. So this is really a, a huge payday. Um, not that money matters, but it certainly doesn't hurt and it helps you make some uh, aggressive decisions out there. Good to hear, okay. If you have a question for Jimmy, raise your hand. We'll get you a mic. Start with Lewis, or start with Jacob. Lewis, Dustin. Jacob's going with Speed Sport, uh, Jimmy, here. Oh, sorry. Um, I'd say other than you, uh, this race has proven you know difficult for drivers to find success in multiple times. You've obviously done it, but six different winners in the last six years. What makes this race so difficult to conquer? You know, and has it gotten tougher to win or to repeat in it over the years? A track position just continues to be more and more important. So, uh, depending on how you qualify, depending how. Um, you know the the stages work out and if it's accumulated points leads to the final stage and where you start or a draw or they draw for inversion I, I think that really has a big influence when you get down to a 15 lap shootout at the end 
um, you know, your winner is really coming from the front row, maybe the second row. Um, so whatever leads to that point in time is really what, what makes that happen. Lewis here in the middle. Lewis Frank of Reuters. Uh, Jimmy, you've had a challenging few months. Um, how much more of a curveball is it when they throw another a change in the, in the, like the hood scoops in this car? How much of a uh, challenge is it this weekend? Yeah, I mean, it definitely is a challenge. We're, we're working through a lot of different issues that we didn't anticipate seeing. Um, some of the components aren't staying on the car. Um, that's kind of an important issue. So uh, we're, we've had crew members going to and from the shop. Thankfully, it's only a couple miles away and uh, trying to keep the car um, up to spec. Uh, we've had an issue with the splitter that our guys are working on now. Um, so, you know, some of these new parts that have come to the cars this weekend, they haven't been run before, so there's, there's just a lot of work that goes into that. So, um, if you went and asked one of my crew guys right now, you'd hear a lot of foul words come out of their mouth. Um, I get to sit back and watch, but uh, it, throws, it throws a curveball at all of us. But Dustin? D Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Uh, Jimmy, after your visit the other day to Indianapolis Motor Speedway, uh, how much are you looking forward to the 500? And also, certainly there's been talk about maybe a collaboration of a race weekend between NASCAR and Indy at some point. What, what was kind of the, uh, did you see evidence in person or otherwise that uh, the IndyCar side's open to something like that, or even the competitors are open to having a joint weekend with NASCAR at some point? Yeah, I was unaware of that conversation and, and didn't sense anything like that when I was there. It was strictly an opportunity for me to go see my friends at McLaren. Um, and also the, uh, the garage area, especially all the old guys in IndyCar I know really well. Um, oftentimes I've sat at home and have watched their practice and thought, man, I, I could have gone. I had an open day. So I didn't let that be the case this year. Um, I have never seen an IndyCar come down the front stretch at Indy. So I had to step out there and, and watch one of those bullets go flying by, which was really cool. And frankly, the last IndyCar race that I've been to was probably late 90s in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, when I used to live up there. So um, it was a nice just change of pace. Um, spent a lot of time with Johnny Rutherford, spent a lot of time with Mario Andretti. Unfortunately, Fernando I had a pretty free schedule as they were putting his car back together, so I hung out with him quite a bit. Uh, so it was nice and really just a social thing for me to go up and, and see some old friends. Many of you remember Jay Fry. I was able to see Jay and catch up with him. Um, Saw Mr. Penske, uh, saw Elio. So I mean, it was it was cool. It was good just to go up there and socialize. And I I left shortly after lunch once the teams really got into the swing of things and were busy. Um, a, a driver can only stand and watch other drivers so long. So uh, after I did my social piece, I came back home. Yeah, it's such a spectacle, and the amount of people that were there on a you know Wednesday to Thursday, I guess it was Thursday, just to see practice was impressive. Um, I was also thrown off by golf carts driving through the garage area, scooters moving around. Pit lane was a way different environment. Um, so it was just cool to see how things are done, just, just a different look on it. And, and I want to go up and see you know, that place packed full of people and feel the energy that I've heard about so many times. Mark? Mark Carroll, PRN. Jimmy, I was listening to a comment that you made after the race at Kansas last week. Somebody asked you, hey, are you, you know, great run more confident going to Charlotte, and you got no, and then you took this really deep breath. <sighs> uh, is this getting more exasperating to you, more frustrating to you as, as time goes on? And you always try to put a positive spin on it, but is it starting to really kind of wear on you? Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, it, is, it is challenging. There's, there's no way around it. Um, you know, every week I'm able to go to the shop and check in and see what we're working on and, and how hard everybody's working. And you, get excited for the week, you lead to Friday, you kind of let things roll off. I let things roll off my shoulders and hit the weekend. You know, I was pretty frustrated when I got out of the car in Kansas. The first half of the race, or first two thirds of the race was, was pretty bad. And uh, the rally back to sixth was respectable. Um, and then as I took a couple deep breaths that you probably heard, um, you know, I, I realized I was in fourth. And before that restart, I was hopeful our outside lane could advance and maybe had a look at a win or a second place finish behind Eric. So, I, you know, it was nice to be back in that moment, but certainly the frustration's coming through. I mean, I've never worked so hard to run where I do. Um, I've never seen our team work so hard to, uh, you know, just have a, not, not be able to get back to where we want to in, in a short period of time. Um, that, that's, that's the hard part. 
So at this point, what, what is the worst part of this? What's the most frustrating part of this? Um, is it, is it <laughs> no, people like me bringing it no, up? No, you you have a job to do, and and uh, it's part of it, man. I'm I'm uh, been racing my whole life. I've been through all the ups and downs, and you know I've sat at this very desk with a lot of highs in here and enjoying those moments. So, uh, you know, racing's racing. You're gonna have you're gonna have all that stuff. So, it's not that. Um, some of the uh, nice people on Twitter can can bother you from time to time, uh, but but really it's just you know, when you put in such an effort and you don't get the return, and we've all experienced it in different ways in life, that, that's the frustrating part. But I'm not smart enough to quit, I'm not smart enough to walk away. I love what I do, I wanna be out there racing. I love driving for Rick, and Ally's been an amazing sponsor. Um, so just keep on digging, that's all I can do. Uh, yeah, Barry Richmond, WIKG, Piedmont Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, as being an avid athlete, runner, marathon, and whatnot, Con contrast the difference of the individuality of what you do as a runner versus maybe racing being more of a team uh, type effort. Do you feel more of an autonomy or freedom when you compete in the various events? Yeah, when you're, when you're doing, I guess the marathon's a perfect example. If I wasn't happy with my time, I could look in the mirror and find the answer pretty quick. Um, you know, there, there are times on the racetrack where that reality is there and I can see it. There are other times where responsibility may shift and fall heavier in other areas. And, you know, that's, that's team sport. I mean, that, that happens to everybody. But that is the one beauty of you know, my hobby in, in those moments. If I don't hit my goal that I'm after, I'm, I know where to look. Jimmy, the other day you mentioned your impatience over not winning and also not knowing what you're gonna be doing in a couple of years. Is there not a contract extension out there? Are you closer to giving it up than we realize? No, I just don't have anything signed beyond 2020. So those, those conversations usually start probably a year out. So Rick and I will get into that uh, before long. Um, but you know, the, the real reality is I, I'm not, uh, I don't have 10 years left. Probably don't have five years left. So being impatient you know, and the comment that I made there was, you know, there's less runway than, than there was when I first started. And I've been able to be patient through my career in a lot of ways, and it served me well. Um, I feel like now where I am, I don't, I, I don't have that luxury any longer. If I want a shot to win eight, nine, whatever it is, more, more wins, I, I don't have that luxury. Um, this year is almost halfway through, and then uh, next year will be here before we know it. So I'm just aware of my opportunities to accomplish what I want to. There's just fewer of them left, and I, I need to get, we need, we need to get after it. Here in the middle, the uh, red shirt. Chris Murdoch, Race Chaser Media. Jimmy, uh, looking forward to the 600. You just unveiled your paint scheme. Can you talk about what that event was like and what it means to you have the Donlin family on, on the hood and uh, you know the looking forward to the 600? Yeah, I'm proud to have the Donlin family uh, involved this weekend and then the uh, numerous uh, fallen soldiers that will be on all the race cars uh, for the 600. Um, we love our camo scheme. The car looks really good. Ally um, loves to give back, loves to do things right, and, and is certainly, um, you know, use, or they're using this opportunity on Memorial Day weekend to, uh, to do some really great things. So excited about it. I love the notion of a marathon, and, and the 600 is our marathon of sorts uh, for cup racing. So excited about the weekend. Seth Edgar, Moore, Sports Tribune. Uh, Jimmy, speaking of not having the patience, with DW retiring at the end of this Fox season, would it mean more to you to tie his mark uh, before he leaves the booth? Honestly, that's not uh, that's not crossed my mind. The, the individuals at 84 victories, I know and respect very well, but it's never been about anything against them or uh, you know trying to beat them. There's never been anything competitive between me and them. Um, it's it's more of an honor that I've I've been to, I'm at 83 and I've been able to equal uh, equal Kale, and if I was to equal them, but that, that that memory may have been around a couple of years ago when I won 83 and was thinking about 84 and the fact that I would be in that opportunity to honor them and equal them, but man, it's been a while. I, I haven't even thought about that piece. It's just about a trophy. It's just about a checkered flag. Um, there, there really isn't anything else with it. 
Okay, any final questions for Jimmy? Oh, we've got last one here to Mark. Mark Garrow, PR, and Jimmy, I was asked Kyle this question a moment ago. Your sense of pride in the way that NASCAR handles and Charlotte Motor Speedway handles Memorial Day and the way we, we honor the country. It's amazing, simply amazing. And I think NASCAR and Charlotte Motor Speedway have set the bar over the years and continue to raise it. And then it tracks across the country. We continue to see other track owners and operators um, you know, pay their uh, respects as well. In Talladega, we see the American flag go by behind that uh, semi-truck flyovers, um, parachuters with uh, American flags flying, servicemen and women all over the place. So it is great to see, and, and certainly on Memorial Day, it's kind of the peak of the, the year for us to say thank you. But uh, it's really nice that week in and week out, we see servicemen and women at track and can thank them for their service. Okay, thank you so much, Jimmy. Good luck going for your fifth victory in this race. Appreciate it. Wrap up the availability in this room with the defending winner of the Monster Energy NASCAR All-Star Race and driver of arguably the coolest car in the field this weekend, the number four Bush Beer Millennial Car Ford, and that is Kevin Harvick. Kevin, um, not only talk about the car, but can you talk about sort of the activation Bush did with all those videos on social media? That was very funny. Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, I think after, as you look at, um, you know, Bush and Mobile One, but, you know, with the Bush uh, brand team, they've obviously done a great job of, of activating not only this program, but the car to can uh, at Daytona was, you know, one of the biggest things that they've ever done. And who would have thought something so ugly would be so popular? Um, but it's it's great interaction, and, you know, it's it's been a lot of fun to, to go through the whole thing and to really see it all rolled out. Um, just makes me proud to be a part of a, a great, uh, great team of people that have done a great job. So uh, I've learned a few new words and uh, still don't really know exactly what they mean, but uh, we've had a lot of fun with it. And, you know, as, as you go through uh, things like this to poke fun at yourself and, and not really know what's going on is, is part of the fun. So it's been, uh, it's been a great promotion. And, and I never thought looking at it on a piece of paper that it would be something that everybody talked about so much. All right, thank you, Kevin. If you have a question for Kevin, please raise your hand and we'll get you a mic. Start with Bob here in the middle. Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. Does the sport still need a 600-mile race? Is that one of those traditions you feel needs to stay? Uh, there are definitely traditions that, that need to stay. I think that's one of them. You know, I think as, as you look at, um, you know, the, the Coke 600 and, and you look at the Daytona 500, um, the Southern 500, anything past that, I would probably say you need to shorten your race. So why? 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 Yeah, why is it 600? Have you ever won it? <laughs> I probably can't explain it to you then. Um, you know, but honestly, it's it, it's it's just like it's it's a crown jewel race. You know, it's 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 close to home. Everybody puts a lot of effort into it. Um, you know, Mobile One puts a lot of effort into it because it is a 600-mile race, and, and you know they they want to prove that their parts and pieces look better than everybody else's who doesn't have Mo Mobile One in them. So, you know, th there's a lot of things to, to prove, and, and everybody wants to to win at Charlotte, and and the 600 is one of those races that every driver and team in that garage are going to going to say that they want to win, and there's just not there's only three or four races that everybody in the garage is going to say. You know, those are three or four races that, that we can agree on as, as being our, our crown jewel races. It's not but the answer you wanted? Nope. You didn't? <laughs> I got you. Kevin Steve Reef from the Associated Press. Uh, the All-Star Race, again, second straight year, they're using it more as a R and d project, I guess, you know, for, for next year. Um, do you like that as a driver or, or not? You know, it's 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 really it's a, it's a race that you can try some things like that. I wish we would have had a little bit more on track time with the parts and pieces that we had on the car to, to have a little bit of information on on the things that that are going on. Uh, we had a lot of questions that, that got answered. You know, to today in practice, if you if you would have um, told me that not told me that we had a different splitter and and hood hood ducks on the car, I would have probably not known the difference. So. Um, you know, it didn't really affect any of the, the the handling problems that you have with the car. They still 
they still you know don't handle as well as they need to behind each other but it's not any different than than what it was um, you know with or without them Lewis and then Barry Uh, Lewis Franco Reuters, getting back to your car, have you had to explain to Keelan what some of the stuff meant? And as a responsible adult, how do you get around it? Uh, he j he hasn't been past the fact that it's pink, so <laughs> he he has just asked me why am I driving a pink car and and why did I agree to that? So I haven't really pushed it any further than that. And he's got a baseball game and a couple of things to do tomorrow, so he's not going to be hanging around all day as long as we don't get to a few of the. Uh, initials on the hood will be in good shape. <laughs> Barry? Uh, Barry Richmond, Piedmont Broadcasting, WAKG. Uh, you talked about the longevity. Where are you at? Oh, over here. OK. <laughs> um, you talked about the length of some of the races, and the sport certainly can support that. But for a race like the 600, what is the point of exhaustion for a driver? And has the stages? Um, ramped it up or has it given you a, a, a break in the race again given that that is the 600? Well, you know, I, I think as you, as you look at it, my opinion of, of whether we should have stages or not is is neither here nor there. We have four, sta you know, four stages of the race and there's 70 points on the line so it's important. You know, I think as, as you look at the amount of points that you can gain from winning those stages, uh, stages are important. I mean, you, you need to win stages and, and that was um, you know, we did that. We did well last week in winning a stage and, and getting a bonus point and finishing second in the second stage. And from there, whatever happens is is kind of icing on the cake. You know, from a point standpoint, just because of the fact that that you've had a, a good part to the night. You had a third part to that with a third stage. It, you know, it's just it's that much more important. So there's there's a lot of points um, you know on the line that can. You know, last year we we blew a tire and never even made it to the end of the first stage. And Kyle won everything and, and gain 70 points on us in one night that's that's more than any other race by 10 so if you have a perfect night so it's it just depends on how hot it is um, if it's going to be as hot as they forecast it to be it'll be it'll be a long day but you know you're, you're mentally programmed to go 500 500 miles so you know your body kind of knows when you've done this for a long time it kind of knows that it's like hey what, what are we doing here and you have to mentally tell yourself that really, you know, when you look at the scoreboard and they tell you you're halfway done, it, it's, it's really not that great of a sign because you know that you have a long ways to go and you already feel like you've gone a long ways. So it's, um, you know, for us, it's, it's a little bit different mental preparation in order to keep yourself from being wore out, you know, four or 500 miles in to make sure that you're ready for the last 100 miles that are extra. Go to Mark and then Jim. Mark Arrow, PRN. Uh, Kevin, I just asked this question, Jimmy and Kyle. How do you feel about the way NASCAR um, is so patriotic? It's not only Memorial Day, but week in, week out. It just seems as a sport, we just kind of stand up and salute. As a sport, you do it better than any other sport. And, you know, I think that's, that's one thing. And, and for us, we do, uh, and, and Charlotte Motor Speedway does a great job on Memorial Day uh, to, you know, showcase the military and how much appreciation we have for it. But this isn't something that, that just happens one week in a year for us. This happens every single week. I mean, the amount of support that are here for our military and the appreciation for our military and the things that they do uh, show up every single week uh, at a NASCAR race. And, and there isn't a sport that does it as good. Jim? Dot com. Uh, last week, aside from the finish, did you feel that that was the best car in, in the best position to win that you've been? This season, and is it? Do you feel that it was good timing, considering you're coming to similar track at Charlotte? It was. It was the best weekend that we've had on a mile and a half racetrack. Um, you know, I think as as you look at the performance of the car, we lost a little bit of the handling at the end of stage two. Um, felt like we, you know, were back, you know, better than we were uh, at the end of the final stage to just take off and, and lead. Um, I I really I look at having. I look at things as having a chance to, at a, if you're going to have a chance to win, you have to lead laps and you have to have speed. So um, to me, that's, that's the first step. And, and we'll figure out how to make it handle um, better than, 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 it needs, than it did 
you know, there in the, in the latter part of the race. But, you know, once once we had the debris on the splitter, I think that, that was a great lesson for everybody. You know, you hear us talk about, you know, the sensitivity to the front of the cars. But we went from a 12 laps wide open to not being able to make the corner um, because of a piece of windshield tear off. Um, you know, on the splitter and wrapped around the splitter. And, and for us, at, at, at that point, it, we kind of were chasing our tail. We had to put a set of tires on, didn't have any tires at the end, restarted on the bottom and, and just kind of treaded water there, there at the end once we got our lap back. Um, but speed-wise and, and the way that the weekend went, you know, we'll, we'll figure the rest of it out. And that's, you have to be able to lead, lap to lead laps to consistently win these races. Here to Hi, Kevin. Hill Overton, WIXC Radio. Uh, this track, of course, has 24 degrees of banking, same as in 1960 when it started. That's at both ends. But yet people say even though with the same banking, it's difficult more at one end than the other. Where do you find the most difficult part to negotiate here, and where do you get through it the best? Yeah, well, the only thing the same is from 1960s uh, here is probably the grandstands and the snack bar up top. Um, <laughs> But you know, I think as 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 you look at this particular racetrack, this is a this is a really tough racetrack to navigate from a handling standpoint. You, you know, because it it goes it's very moody. Um, you know, the, the sun is as effective on this racetrack as it is any other racetrack that we go to. Um, there's a lot of little bumps that are in the wrong spots uh, to to keep your your speed up through the corner that you have to navigate well. So this is a Especially next week is a, is a it's a it's a tough race to handle because you start in the sunlight, you go out of the sunlight, and, and there's just so many things that that change throughout the night, and then you add in the traction compound uh, that they've they put on the racetrack that wears out, you know, as you go through the night. So there, there's a this is a tough racetrack uh, to to get the handling right on the car and keep it right. Any <clears throat> excuse me? Any final questions for Kevin? All right, Kevin, good luck going back to back.